Hey guys, Bartel's Bookshelf here with my latest review, which uh, is <laughs> the novelization of the film Underworld, uh, written by Greg Cox. So, um, my experience with the Van Helsing novelization sort of uh, brought me back in touch with uh, that era of my life and all of the sort of uh, films and sort of uh, media in my life at that time that was very formative to me, that sort of uh, influenced um, my already existing love of werewolves and just kind of expanded on them. Um, and Underworld <laughs> was one of those. If you're not aware of the movie, it's uh, it's it spawned a whole franchise. It's very redolent of that, like, uh, late 90s, early 2000s, you know, sort of a Matrix era, you know, uh, about a war between vampires and werewolves, and everybody wears leather, and there's, you know, gunplay, and it's very uh, silly and over the top. But I saw it when I was, like, 11 or 12, around the same time as um, Van Helsing which actually also features uh, Kate Beckinsale. Um, but yeah, my, my uh, sort of re-experiencing of uh, Van Helsing brought me back in touch with uh, this film and this series, um, and I found out that Greg Cox wrote uh, novelizations of the first three films as well as a prequel novel um, that's unrelated to any of the films, um, which is apparently contradicted by the lore that's revealed in the second and third movies, but whatever. So I thought I would give it a try. Um, I've never read uh, Greg Cox before, but I found out that he wrote um, some very well-respected Star Trek novels, including uh, the Eugenics Wars series, which is all about, you know, the, the eugenics wars that led to Khan and everything. And um, I have those books, but I haven't read them, but I've heard they're, they're some of the best. So I was really interested to check this out. And um, yeah, this was actually really surprising in how much I enjoyed it. I mean, obviously, I'm already familiar with the movie, so that kind of helped going in. But uh, the thing that surprised me about this was, uh, well, the first thing that surprised me about this was that um, it's written not at all like you would expect a movie novelization to be written. The language is very, like, um, archaic and verbose. There's lots of, like, $10 words and stuff like that. I actually wrote some down just because there's so, there's so many of them, like, every few pages. Like, I even ran into some words that I'd never heard of before. You know, like, just for example, there was, like, sybaritic, fulsome, perfidious, um... And then there were a few that I had to look up I'd never heard before, like um, Quisling, which is like uh, based off of a Nordic word for like a traitor. Um, there's Incarnadine, which is like a word for, you know, like the color red. Janissary, which is like a, a, a soldier who's like very devoted to his commander, which is based off of uh, these old um, Ottoman uh, Empire uh, soldiers called the Janissaries who were um, fanatically devoted to the Sultan. Um, things like that that really, like, you wouldn't expect in a book like this, especially in a book based on this movie. <laughs> um, because the movie, I mean, I watched it again after reading this, you know, just to kind of reacquaint myself with it. And I mean, honestly, like, it's not a great movie. It's very much redolent of that early 2000s time period, which is part of the appeal, but... The story is basically non-existent, and uh, it kind of just devolves into, like, action shoot 'em up nonsense, especially at the very end. It, it is fun, but, it, but I, I do feel like, um... The book brought sort of a weird element of classiness to it that the movie doesn't really come across. I mean, nobody, none of the dialogue in the movie uses any of these, like, $10 words, you know. Um, and on top of that, there's lots of, like, little things, like, um, references to, like, the, because this takes place um, in Hungary among this, you know, thousand-year-long war among vampires and werewolves. There's, you know, lot, lots of lore and things like that. And one of the interesting things about this book is that it expands a lot on the characters and the lore, like uh, going into a lot of the, the history of the vampires and the werewolves and their war together. And not only that, but, like, there's little, like, historical asides that I didn't expect, you know, because, as I said, it takes place in Hungary, so there's a lot of history there. And, like, it mentions, because uh, the beginning of the beginning scene takes place um, on the, uh, the metro, and there's, like, little asides, like, about, like, the history of the metro, like when it was built and, and when like uh, trains were first like uh, uh, introduced into Hungary, like all of this like extraneous detail that's not at all in the movie, but it made it really interesting. And I think it worked for the book, you know, um, because it gives it this sort of like it, it fits that kind of austere, like ancient vibe of, you know, like vampires and this like centuries long war, you know, it's very much in the in the mode of like Anne Rice and that or that kind of thing. And um uh, very, very similar to uh, The World of Darkness. Um, there was actually a court case when the movie came out over how similar it was <laughs> to uh, The World of Darkness. Um, to be honest, I think uh, it's hard not to engage in that type of vibe, you know, that, that 90s, early 2000s vibe, you know, with, like, the, the city-slicked streets and the urban sprawl and stuff, like, and, you know, warring underground creatures, you know, fighting this hidden war that nobody else knows about, you know. Um, it's kind of hard to avoid the comparisons, but... 
I love the world of darkness, and I think it's probably this movie that really kind of turned me on to that vibe, you know, that sort of gothic punk vibe that the world of darkness was going for. Because I saw, again, I saw this when I was like 11, 12. I didn't know anything about Vampire the Masquerade or Werewolf the Apocalypse or anything like that. Um, but I think this kind of really engendered uh, a love for that uh, type of story in me. And uh, I think the book really uh, captures that in a lot of ways even better than the movie because it expands on the characters and the lore. And it's written in this very archaic, verbose way. Um, and because it develops a lot of the characters a bit more... Um, there's a little bit more attachment there because you actually know who everybody is. Like, uh, there's a lot of an ancillary characters in this book, like uh, Khan, the weapons master, and uh, Soren, uh, Craven's uh, sort of right-hand man, that are uh, given a little bit more expansion in the book, and they have uh, several uh, scenes and, like, bits and stuff that are written from their perspective, so we get to learn more about them. Whereas in the movie, they're just kind of, like, side characters that we we're, they just come and go, and we don't really know anything about them, you know. So I think in a lot of ways... The book is actually better than the movie because it gives it more of this, like, semblance of classiness and history and lore and stuff. Of course, I mean, the story still has its issues, and the book doesn't really do anything to fix them because, you know, it can't. It's based on the movie. Um, the romance between Celine, the vampire death dealer, and uh, Michael Corvin, you know, the young human who gets bitten by a werewolf. Um, you know, they, there's this whole Romeo and Juliet thing going on with them. That romance is still a little underdeveloped. Um... Although in the book, there are scenes where they, they sort of learn a little bit more about each other. Michael tells Celine about, like, uh, his dead fiancé and why he ended up in Hungary, which in the theatrical cut of the movie was completely cut out, which doesn't make any sense to me. But um, they restored it for the um, uh, uh, unrated director's cut edition or whatever, which is what I watched for the... Um, uh, after reading this, which I think uh, works better because, you know, we get more character stuff. But if, you had, if you'd only seen the movie, then you would have gotten a lot of extra stuff in this that I think would have been very pleasing. I actually wonder sometimes, like, obviously if, if you were like, a, you know, a sort of goth punk kid in the early 2000s and you were already into this stuff, like, you would have eaten this up, I think. But I wonder if, like, people who saw the movie and just enjoyed kind of the action gunplay shoot 'em up aspects of it, I wonder if they read the book and they were, like, really thrown by all these, like, $10 words and uh, verbose language and all this, you know, history and stuff. It's not at all what you would expect for a, a, a book based on this kind of just sort of a... Because, I mean, as, as much fun as the movie can be, it really is just a shoot 'em up with horror monsters, you know, um, something which the sequels basically just devolved even further into, but I won't get into that. So I wonder if, like, people who enjoyed that aspect of the movie came to the book and were really confused, <laughs> um, but it's really interesting, and it was very fun to read. I think, honestly, this is about the best novel <laughs> of Underworld that you could have written based on this property, but as I said, you know, the story still does have its issues. The romance is under underdeveloped, and especially in the back half of the story, it devolves into just so much action and shoot 'em up stuff and things like that, that it just gets kind of dull after a while. Although it's it's less, um, it's less aggravating in the book, because as I said, in the book, we're in the characters' heads, we're learning about them, we're experiencing things through their eyes. It's the thing that I love about books, that you're able to really get deep into a character and see things through their eyes from their perspective and learn things about them that you can't really reveal in a movie unless you just info dump in dialogue or whatever. And Greg Cox, like, brings a lot of detail to it that, that just makes, uh, that, that that keeps it from being boring. Um, like, uh, he, and he, as I said, he develops a lot of the, the side characters like uh, Erica, who in the movie is just kind of this... Um, blonde vampire bimbo who's lusting after Craven, who's leading the, the vampire coven. I don't want to get super into the details of the lore because it's fucking complicated, but in the movie she's kind of just pining after Craven. but in the book it goes a lot more into like her mental state and how Craven is kind of like emotionally abusive toward her and how she's sort of like hanging on to him because of that, and she has a bit more growth as a character um, because of the way that he treats her and things like that, and the book spends more time in her head and things like that. So, so it's all kind of stuff like that that really comes together to make this a really entertaining read. And, um, as I said, like, I just have such a soft spot for, um, that sort of, uh, you know, early 2000s, you know, World of Darkness, Vampire the Masquerade stuff. I've played, uh, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines so many times. It's one of my favorite games. Just something about that, um... As I said, that kind of the, the gothic punk vibes, the urban sprawl, the darkness, the shadows, the atmosphere, you know, the rain-slicked streets and the neon lights of the city and, you know, the street lamps and just that, that kind of, the, the urban loneliness and, you know what I mean? Like, 
that just really appeals to me. And as I said, I think this movie was kind of the first one to really engender a love for that style of storytelling in me. So if you're already kind of like into this sort of stuff, if you've sort of fallen for it, hook, line, and sinker, I think um, I would give the book a try. It actually really surprised me. Of course, it's no like masterpiece or anything, but as I said, I think for a book based on this film, on this property, I think this is probably as, as good a book as ever could be written. And I'm really, really interested now not only to read uh, Greg Cox's um, Con, uh, Con Noonien Singh novels, the Eugenics Wars books, but also to read um, the other novelizations he wrote in this world. Um, actually, the book he wrote after this one was uh, the prequel book that I mentioned, which um, expanded on um, the backstory of the film about, you know, Lucian and uh, the, the werewolf leader and his love for Sonia, the vampire princess, um, which, as I said, is a apparently contradicted by the actual movie sequels, but who cares? I don't care about that. Um, in fact, I'm actually really interested to read the prequel especially because it's not based on any of the existing films, so he's not necessarily beholden to what's already been written. You know, he's kind of free to invent and go crazy and do his own thing, so I'm actually really interested to see what that's like. So yeah, it just... Uh, Again, I'm just sort of uh, deep in the trenches of uh, my 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 uh, gothic werewolf love, you know. Um, and I'm just I'm just sort of a <laughs> I'm I'm a, I'm regressing uh, into you know my my tween you know early teen years when I was just obsessed with uh, you know werewolves and, and and horror monsters and just the gothic atmosphere and all that stuff. Um, and you know, and I, I think there's you know there's something to be said for that. You know, it's 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 good to kind of go back and re-ingratiate yourself with the things that you loved as a kid and sort of to remember why you loved them and how they affected you. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, don't go into this expecting any kind of literary masterpiece, but if you like this sort of stuff like I do, it's a ton of fun. Um, much more well-written than any movie novelization <laughs> has the right to be. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really, really glad I read it, and I look very much forward to reading uh, Greg Cox's uh, other books set in this universe. So yeah, that was my... Uh, quick review of uh, Underworld, written by Greg Cox. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, are you guys fans of this franchise? Are you fans of, of books or, you know, TV shows or media kind of set in this sort of gothic punk early, you know, 90s, early 2000s, you know, un you know, universe? I mean, talk to me. Let me know, you know? If there's anything out there like that, with that kind of World of Darkness vibe, with werewolves, I mean, let me know. I would love to read more stuff like that. Obviously, there's tons of, like, vampire novels that are set in kind of, you know, cities and that kind of urban sprawl and stuff like that. Dracula really kind of invented that, but you don't really see that with werewolves very often. Um, so if there's anything like that out there that you guys know of, let me know. But uh, until then, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye.